Yo, 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 what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a dark bow side Pyrex type sample. I have a sample pulled up from one of my recent sample packs that I just dropped. It's a free sample pack. Um, it's got 10 free samples. I'll leave a link down in the description for the sample pack. It's got a bunch of samples in this style, all dark kind of vibe. So, but the sample that I have pulled up here, it's very orchestral and dark and it's got that south side vibe. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just break it down. Like usual, I'm gonna go over everything that I did from um, the VSTs, the MIDIs, the effects, um, how I structured it, all that. So yeah, don't forget to um, subscribe to my channel, leave a like on the video, and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So I got the full sample pulled up here. We're sitting at 154 BPM, and we're in the F sharp Phrygian scale. Um, I didn't even try to make it in the Phrygian scale when I was making the sample. I was just laying down notes that sounded good and it ended up being Phrygian. It was kind of confusing me when I was trying to figure out the scale of the sample, but yeah, it's F sharp Phrygian and apparently Phrygian is, is pretty good for dark sounding samples. So um, if you're like me and you're used to using minor and you want to switch it up, go ahead and change it to Phrygian. I think it just changes like one or two notes, but you know, it can make it sound a little bit different. So yeah, we're in, we're in F sharp Phrygian, 154 BPM for south side samples. You usually want to be in the higher BPM range, like 135, like 160 even, as opposed to Pyrex samples are typically lower, like 110, 120. That's why I'm at 154 BPM. So I'll go ahead and play the sample so you can hear how it sounds. Yeah, as you can see, I just broke it down into four different sections here. But there's just five sounds total, including the bass. But yeah, very dark, very energetic, high BPM. Definitely a south side vibe. Um, but yeah, I'll go ahead and just go into each instrument, show all the effects, everything that I did. So yeah. All right, so like I said, we're in F sharp Phrygian, 154 BPM. First thing that I did is I pulled up this um, stringed kind of preset from a bank in contact. And usually I would show um, exactly which instrument it is, but this instrument I've been using a lot and it's kind of a little bit too saucy for me to show it. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just say it's in contact. Um, it's not like a super rare bank or anything, but it is a unique preset that I kind of tweaked a little bit. So I kind of want to keep it um, for myself, but yeah, I'll go ahead and play how it sounds with no effects. I came up with this really simple pattern. So let me just play it so you can hear how it sounds. And then it just repeats. So yeah, very repetitive, the strings, very dark. Um, with Southside samples, I noticed that a lot of the stuff that he uses are, is really repetitive. I noticed he'll take a full sample and he'll just cut the first like bar or two and just loop it um, and just use that for a lot of his beats. He likes, you know, the repetitive kind of stuff. So that's what I was going for with this um, this pattern. And uh, basically what I did is I just started at C sharp and then um, built this pretty simple chord here, F sharp, C sharp again, and then F sharp again, and then put a really low C sharp. And then right here, it just goes up to G and then to D and then goes back down, repeats to the same chord and then goes down F sharp five and F sharp four and then just repeats. So for the effects, what I did is I routed it to a different mixer channel. Um, this is called a bus. So I routed it to the bus channel. Um, and basically what that means is um, it's just an empty mixer track that has um, effects on it. The reason for doing that is if you want to have a sound and you want to be able to blend the effects into it, instead of applying the effects directly onto the sound, and it might sound like the same thing, but um, there is a difference. You know, I'm not a professional engineer, you know, so I don't know exactly the difference, but I do know that in a lot of instances, it'll sound cleaner when you have a bus and you blend it in as opposed to putting the effect directly onto the sound. So that's what I did here. Um, and I added effect rack, cheap tape option. It just kind of makes it sound more vintage and vinyl. 
and then same thing with mondo mod just kind of widens the sound and makes it sound a little bit more vintage and then i added uh some reverb some gross beat the one beat gate preset um it just kind of makes it a little bit more bouncy and then um a bunch of eqs eq'd out the lows some of the highs some of the low mids eq'd that out and then some of the high mids eq'd out some of that and so here's what it sounds like with all of the effects on it yeah that's pretty much it um for the first instrument Daniel Taylor. the next thing that i did is i pulled up another string from contact in orchestral essentials 2 the violin spiccato and fast note down um, and i came up with this pattern right here pretty simple pattern so it's a D note, another D note, and an A, and then the next bar here is D, um, D again, and then the same note but an octave up. We'll go ahead and play how it sounds with no effects. And for the effects, I routed it to this channel here with Effect Racked and Mondo Mod Stereo. And then I added some Echo Boy with this preset on it. Um, and some EQ, get out some of the lows, and then I panned it to the right, and this is what it sounds like with effects. And that's it for the second string. Alright, so the next thing that I wanted to add after the strings was a vocal. I went to contact again and I pulled up Nucleus and I have this preset here with um, these phrases. If you're using Nucleus, something that I just recently learned, um, for some reason all of the sounds have a delay on them. It just kind of like, it always made me not really use this plugin that much even though the sounds were really fire. But what you can do is go into the advanced settings and then put this knob all the way up and it'll make it on time. So if you do get this bank, make sure you do that with your sounds. And so once I did that, I laid down this pattern right here. Like I said, everything in here is pretty repetitive, but you still want to add little changes, like even the most minor thing, like just one note. That's not like literally the same thing over and over. Added uh, little changes like that. I thought the vocal sounded good with the strings. For effects, I just made sure to widen it up. And then I added reverb and I added this um, preset with this plugin that makes it go back and forth and it just pans it from left to right a little bit. And then I EQ'd out a lot of the lows and some of the highs. And this is what it sounds like with the effects. And that's pretty much it for the vocals. Um, but I wanted to add a little bit more to the sample, kind of make it a little bit more unique, specifically the vocals to make the vocals a little bit more unique. So what I did is I took this pattern, I highlighted everything, and then I hit Alt-Y to flip the pattern horizontally. And the reason why I did this is because I knew I was going to export it, and then I knew that I was going to reverse it. So that's a good trick if you want to reverse a sound and you want to kind of layer it with the original pattern. Make sure you reverse the pattern first so that when you do reverse it, it doesn't sound off and like not mix with the original pattern. What I did is I hit Alt Y, flipped it, and I went here and I rendered it out as an audio clip. Then I made sure to flip it back to the original. And so I have this pattern here and this is what it sounds like when I exported it out as an audio clip. So it's just backwards, it doesn't make any sense, but then when you reverse it, and then you can blend it with the original, right here. When you do Alt-Y and you flip it and then you reverse it, it makes it so that the reversed notes are the same as the original notes, and that it's not like backwards and not making sense when you mix it with the original pattern. But then for this I just added some basic effects because um, it already had the effects from the original vocal on it. I just EQ'd out a lot more of the lows and a lot more of the highs and then I routed it to the same mixer channel with the, um, the effects. So it sounds like this. And then when I blended it with the original it sounds like this.
happy. I just wanted to do something a little bit different and um, kind of make this sample a little bit more unique with the vocals. The last thing that I did is I added this really simple bass line um, on F sharp with the one shot that I always use from a Nico one shot pack. And it just repeats the same um, bass note over and over. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for all these sounds. Um, once I had everything laid out, I just sequenced it out, broke it down into four different sections, and then put the stems as always after the sample so that whoever whoever is using the sample can rearrange it um, however they want when they're making the beat. And usually I would um, export it out, bring it back in and mess around with the pitch. Um, but I didn't even have to do that. I liked it how it was. I just wanted to keep it. So that's pretty much it. 154 BPM, high energy, um, repetitive strings, very dark, energetic, high BPM. That's how I approach the outside vibe. So yeah, hopefully you learned something. Um, like I said, the sample, the part of a pack that I just made and dropped last week with 10 free samples. I'll leave a link down in the description for that. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.